Welcome back to Always Talking with Audrey. It's Audrey, and thank you so much for tuning in today. Today we are going to be uh, doing a little different type of video. Now, if you are new to my channel, hello, welcome, what's up? Even if you've been here for a while, this is going to be a different topic. I know I've made like one video about um, this topic kind of earlier this year when it came to basketball wives. But yes, if you are here and you see the title of this video, then you guys know that we are going to be talking about colorism, featureism, and texturism today. Yes, yes, yes. Now, I first want to say that these three things are kind of like roots on a tree. The tree is racism. So how does that break down with us how does that affect us as black individuals i want to be able to talk about it and really educate and even learn something from you guys in the comment section below so i first just want to say that these this is going to be an honest and raw video it's not meant to offend harm or bash anyone or trigger anyone if you are triggered easily with this topic please feel free to click off the video but please know it is a safe space to live in your truth and whatever that may be right so we're not here to bash or shun you you're welcome here we're going to stay respectful right so without further ado let's get started okay so jumping right into it i want to go ahead and define these words for you so colorism is the preferential treatment of the same race of same race people with lighter skin and prejudicial treatment of same race people with dark skin now um, we can see this where in the past we've had things like the brown paper bag system where they looked at the tones of our skin to determine whether we are too dark or are just right basically now featureism is the preferential treatment of people with features that have historically been viewed viewed as more desirable more beautiful and the prejudic prejudicial treatment of those who features are viewed as offensive strong and harsh so think about um, Serena Williams and Venus Williams those are two black tennis players that have muscles broad shoulders their features are deemed as harsh strong and offensive if that makes sense right um, and then we have texturism texturism is the um, per, uh, is the treatment of people with looser textured hair and the harsh treatment for people that have kinker kinkier coarse hair within the same race so this is where we talk about that whole what is your hair on the chart if it's 4c then that's deemed undesirable that is not the texture that you want that is not a part of the natural hair community that is being plastered all over tv so i really wanted to break those down and give you guys examples just to know what exactly all three of those words mean and how when you are ignorant you can offend someone and ignorant is not a diss ignorant is lack of knowledge and lack of information so when you are ignorant to this you can unknowingly offend someone and we want to be able to talk about it and, and teach each other. If you offend me, I should be able to say it and offer you something where you will be able to look at it and say, hey, I didn't even know that, but now it makes sense as to why that made you mad, right? So jumping into the next part of the video, we are going to be giving a little bit of back history on what exactly um, these three things and how it applies to us. So if you guys did not know, colorism is a big 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 deal it's, it's also the other two as well but colorism is the main one and it a lot of times gets sweeped under the rug because it's it's just not something that people want to talk about a lot of people cover up colorism with the saying of i'm not racist because they're saying oh i'm not going to exclude you i don't want to sit by you but they're forgetting the fact that they have pre connotations of skin colors and then texturism of hair textures and featureism of how features look on black people so no you're not racist per se but you have preconceived notions about a group of people depending on what they look like and this is a huge issue if you guys did not know 
Um, what people think colorism affects is a lot of times dating and relationships. We hear about um, lighter skinned women a lot of times saying, oh, you guys are just mad because you guys are scared that I'm going to take your man or your man desires me. Or we oftentimes hear a lot of men saying that they want to date either white women or light skinned women. So uh, that's their preference. And they a lot of times downplay darker skinned women. So a lot of people categorize what colorism is into that little itty bitty box. But what they really don't know is that colorism affects job offers, traveling, housing opportunities, the incarceration rate, um, the representation of us on media, self-identity, and more. Now, I want to dive into self-identity because a lot of people struggle with self-identity because of colorism. So we have a lot of women that either do not like a group of people or have a preconceived notion about a group of people, i.e. lighter skinned women, because they believe that they believe lighter skinned women is better. They believe that they get better opportunities and that they have a privilege, right? Well, that self-identity can also be something that they don't like within themselves. So we would hear about black skinned women bleaching because they want to be lighter. They want to be accepted. They want to be desirable. Um, their self-identity is lost. They have no one around them telling them that they are beautiful. No matter how dark they are, they are beautiful. Their features are accepted. Their hair texture is gorgeous. So that self-identity, when you hear people say like, all my life I wanted to be light skinned, you have no choice but to say, damn, could you imagine waking up and wanting to be something else all of your life? It's downright hurtful, right? So that is why colorism is a big monster that we really have to tackle. It's not about dating. It's not about, oh, you're going to steal my man. It's way deeper than that. Self-identity, job offers, mainstream media. We can talk about that for this whole video, like low-key. We can, we can talk about what we see on TV and how it's made desirable. We can even break that down to the White House. So when Michelle Obama was in office, they also talked about her broad shoulder or her muscular frame. We can um, look at that with Shakari Richardson, the track player. They talked about her for having muscles, right? On mainstream media, that is not looked at as beautiful. But then when we had Melania Trump go into office, she was beautiful. She was gorgeous. And no, she's not white. I mean, she's not black. But what I'm saying is mainstream media will dictate or not dictate, but manipulate what we see and how we recognize it into our day to day lives. So like I said earlier, Serena Williams and Venus Williams, I mean, I can go back my whole life and just remember seeing them on TV and hearing people say, look at those muscles, look at those muscles, they're men, they're, they must be on steroids, like, it's downright disgusting, you know, the, the way that we are perceived on mainstream media is that we have to be soft, we can't be built, we can't be tall, we can't have broad shoulders, we can't have this hair type, we, you know, like I said, colorism, texturism, and featureism. So I don't want to go down a rabbit hole, but I want to bring up one more thing about colorism and criminalization. Now, colorism, especially with black women, Black women, um, darker skinned women have longer prison sentences than light skinned women. So light skinned women spend less time in jail versus dark skinned women. Dark skinned women is perceived guilty and they're more likely to be killed by the police. Now this was a study that was done back in 2009 and here we are in 2021. So I know that these numbers could have increased by now. Um, this can still be approved. This can still be applied to our black men as well. That the colorism, texturism, and featureism still goes with them as well. But as a black woman, black woman, I'm just going to talk about from a standpoint of me being a woman. So I really wanted to bring up that fact for you guys. Now let's go ahead and get into the topic of what it means to not be racist because you happen to like the opposite race, which is a black person, uh, sorry, a white person dating a black man or a white male dating a black woman. So a lot of people believe that you automatically are voided from being racist, colorist, texturist, or featurist because you date the opposite 
sex. Now, this is a big myth, y'all. This is not true. This is not real. You can definitely have a sexual desire for another race. And that it goes, again, with mainstream media and the things that have been put out about particularly the black people. Now, if you guys did not know, black women have been perceived as very sexual beings since the beginning of times. So we can talk about Dr. Sims and how he used to operate, operate on black women. And he even deemed that the bigger the butt and breasts, the more sexual oriented they were. And then the same goes for the black male. There is a big, big, long running um, myth about how they have bigger eggplants than other races. Now, I'm not saying that that's why you date someone and that's why you will perceive them, but this is the things that is literally documented throughout time. So no, you don't have to be racist to date a black or to not date a black person. I mean, we can go back to slavery. There was plenty of slave masters sleeping with the black women. Did any of those slave masters free the black women? No, racism is a power. You have to be able to act behind that and control something. So, yes, we're not saying that you're racist by making ignorant comments. However, you do have a preconceived notion when it comes to skin color, text, uh, hair textures and features that lie on black women or black men. So what I want to do is really have you guys check your privilege at the door. There have been so many people even on TV, like Real Housewives of Potomac um, is really talking about colorism because of a new co-star. Like I said, I did an old video on basketball wives and how they treated another co-star on there. And they had a whole topic of colorism. Colorism is something that really needs to be addressed as, as well as texturism and featurism. I know that texturism and featurism kind of is on the back burner behind colorism because no matter what you may think you know, you look at someone's color first, period, point blank. For people who that love to say they don't see color, you're absolutely lying. And it's okay that you see color. You need to see color. However, the notion that you perceive that color as is the issue. It's just like with me. I am a lighter skinned woman. People clearly see my color so I constantly get asked what is my race what am I mixed with if you are not seeing color then that shouldn't even been a question right my features make you ask that as well because you're trying to wrap your head around why I look the way I do and if you guys are always on my channel then y'all know that I am blackity black black <laughs> and I love it I love it but I know that if I'm being asked this and I'm being treated a certain way, then I can absolutely positively recognize that my sisters that are browner and melanated to the gods are definitely being treated away. And it's unfucking acceptable period point blank. Like I said, a few minutes ago, check your privilege at the door. No one wants to be mocked, ridiculed, or treated less than for things that they cannot control. Now, yes, we can easily say, oh, but we need to treat everyone with respect. That is true. That is absolutely true. We need to treat everyone with respect. But throughout history, there is only one group of women that is constantly treated less than they should. So forgive us if we are a little bit fed up up okay forgive us if we're gonna check your ass every time you say something ignorantly forgive us but it's just gonna continue to happen now I want to close this up with the um, new stance that has been a trend lately this is even on TV y'all it's crazy but this whole we can't say Karen because it's a racial slur okay so I need to know a time where a Karen was denied a job for being a Karen. What does a Karen look like? Or what do you want to believe a Karen looks like? Because the Karens that we see on TV are people, women, who are bothering innocent people and using their privilege 
to incarcerate someone, get have harm done to them, or question them. So when you walk into a building and you're going to a job, tell me a time where someone's like, she must be a Karen. No. Now let me, let's flip it. Tell me a time where you walked into a job and there was a black skinned woman and you said, she must be ghetto. She must have five kids. Two different things. It's not a racial slur. It's literally, it should be banned because people should stop being fucking Karens. But because people can't mind their goddamn business and because of texturism, colorism, and featureism, these Karens believe that they're doing a service to people by not minding their business, okay? So let's repeat it due to colorism because they they're not seeing color as they saw a black man walking down the street or a black woman walking down the street in a well to do neighbor neighborhood. They believed that they did not need to be there or that they didn't live there because they couldn't afford it. Featureism. Oh, he's big and muscular. He's going to harm me. Or texturism. She has the worst hair I've ever seen. She looks unkept. She can't live here. Those are the things that fuel a Karen, okay? Okay, so I don't want to go off on a tangent. I really want to end the video here. If you guys want to talk about this topic more, I can do a part two. We can keep going, but I really want to know your thoughts below. Have you been someone that did not know what colorism, texturism, or featureism was, and this video taught you something? Have you been a victim of these things? Let me know your thoughts below. Please remember to be respectful as always. And I will see you guys in the next video.